Welcome to Be Smart Together. I mainly focus on Power Query and Excel. If you're new, please make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification. Also, feel free to drop a comment to provide feedback, ask questions or let me know if there are any Excel, Power Query, Power Pivot or Power BI topics you're interested in. A few weeks ago, Anand asked a question about how to optimize query performance. There are many things that can impact performance and there is no direct answer most of the time. However, people tend to overload Power Query or Power Pivot. We should leverage the use between Power Query and Power Pivot to achieve the optimum performance. Today, I want to show you how to turn a flat file, which is the Excel file into the recommended data model. Let's start. Here is the sales data. Let's zoom out a bit. When we deal with data in Excel, Capturing everything in one worksheet is common. Because it is handy. Highlighted are columns containing repeated information. Those are not the transactional information, but more of a lookup information. We want to split this data into a fact table, which is the primary transactions table, and two dimension tables, which are the lookup tables. I like to keep the data as it is, and create reference queries. Rename the reference query to fact sales. We want to keep only the transaction data. When we have a lot of columns and want to keep only the relevant columns. The standard ready function, choose column, is very handy in this case. We choose the columns that we want to keep. We can drop the customer name as we can use the customer ID to look up for the customer name. We can also drop the product description, category, brand, and unit price. The fact sales table is now ready. Create another reference query. Name it Dimension Customer. Select the Customer ID and Customer Name columns. Then, click on the Group by Function. Click OK to continue. Delete the Count column. Now we should have a unique Customer Lookup table. You may involve a bit of data cleanse to get a unique table if the Customer Name is inconsistent. Let's create our last reference query. Name it Dimension Product. We want to select the columns we want to keep. Then click on the group by function. Select average for the operation, and then select unit price for the column. Name the new column, unit price. You may want to do it differently, as long as you transform the data into a unique lookup table, which is no duplication. Save the queries and return to Excel. Before we process further, go to the Power Pivot tabs. If you don't have it then you will need to add it from the add-in. To load the data into Power Pivot, right-click on the query and select Load To. We need to check this little box to add the data to Power Pivot. It is known as Data Model. We need to repeat the same process to add the remaining queries to the Data Model. Only one more to go. Load To and check the box. After you added those queries to the Data Model, you will see the queries are now shown the number of rows added. Click on the Manage Data Model icon, you will be directed to the Power Pivot window. I won't cover much about Power Pivot in this video, but if you do interest, please drop a message in the comment. Go to the Diagram view. Here are the three queries we added. Let's move the fact table to the center. This is the Microsoft recommended data model, Start Schema. We want to create the table relations. Select the Customer ID from the Dimension Customer table, and drag it over to the Customer ID in the Fact Sales table. We have now created a one-to-many relationship. You won't be able to create the relationship if there are duplication IDs in the Dimension table. Let's link the second Dimension table with the Product ID. Now we can create the Pivot table. Let's add the Customer name from the Dimension Customer table to the Pivot table and then the category from the Dimension Product table. Also, we want to add the quantity from the Fact Sales table. We don't have the sales amount, but we have the quantity and the unit rate. You can create a measure to calculate the sales amount. We want to create a new measure. The function library in Power Pivot differs from Excel functions. We call it DEX function. It stands for Data Analysis Expression Functions. Name the measure sales amount. We want to use the sum x functions to calculate the sales amount. When you see the x in the DAX function, it means the iterator function. 
the iterator function evaluates every row specified in the function. Sum x function consists of two arguments, table and expression. The first argument, in this case, is the fact sales table. The expression is the quantity multiply the unit rate. We have a little bit challenge here, where the unit rate is from a different table. Therefore, we need to use the related function. The related function can be used when there is an established table relationship. Now we can use the unit rate in the calculation. Add the newly created measure to the pivot table. Instead of calculating the sales amount in Power Query, it is much more efficient to write a DAX code if you want to have better query performance. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.